Hello everyone and welcome to this week's OpenGL 3D game tutorial and this week we're going to be having a look at the basics of post-processing effects. Post-processing effects work by rendering the scene to a texture rather than straight to the screen so that you basically have an off-screen image of the 3D scene. You can then process that 2D image in the same way that you process images in programs like Photoshop to add various effects to it before actually rendering it onto the screen. So the first step of post-processing is to render the scene to a texture, and we're going to be doing this using frame buffer objects. If you're not already familiar with FBOs, then I would suggest checking out my second OpenGL water tutorial, where I explained what they are and how they work. So instead of rendering our 3D scene to the screen, we're going to be rendering it to an FBO, and that will give us a 2D texture with an image of the scene, and also a 2D texture of the depth buffer if we need it. To put this image onto the screen so that we can actually see it, we're going to render the FBO texture onto a 2D quad, and this quad will fill up the entire screen. This will be done in the exact same way that we rendered a 2D textured quad all the way back in episode 6. So at this stage, all of this seems pretty pointless. The game will still look exactly as it did before, and we might as well have just rendered it straight to the screen, rather than rendering it to a texture, and then rendering that texture onto a quad on the screen. However, this now gives us the opportunity to carry out some post-processing effects on the image of the scene. When we render that textured quad onto the screen, we obviously have to use a shader program, just like we did when we rendered the textured quad back in episode 6, or when we rendered the GYs. The shader program determines the colour of every pixel on that quad, so instead of just setting the colour of the quad straight to the colour of the texture, we can do something a little bit fancier. So for a very simple example, we could set the output colour of the fragment shader to 1 minus the colour of the texture, therefore inverting all of the colours in the scene when they get rendered to the quad. And that would be a very simple example of a post-processing effect. Also, our post-processing pipeline doesn't just have to have one step like in this example here. Instead of rendering that full screen quad onto the screen, we could instead render it to another FBO, giving us a new texture that we can use. We can then render a textured quad with that image onto another FBO, using a different shader program to apply a different effect, such as a horizontal Gaussian blur. And we can repeat this as many times as we want with different effects, so I could then apply a vertical Gaussian blur, and finally render that image onto a quad on the screen, applying a shader program that changes the contrast of the image. And it's important to understand that we're not rendering the whole scene each time here. We only render the 3D scene once to the first FBO, and then all of these extra steps just require a single textured quad to be rendered, using a certain shader program to apply the effect. So, seeing as we've already covered topics such as FBOs and rendering textured quads many times in the past, I'm not going to be going over them again in this tutorial, and so I've provided a lot of the code to get started with post-processing effects in the description of this video. So, download the post-processing package, add it to your source folder, and then in Eclipse you can refresh your project so that you can have a look through the code. Firstly, we've got an FBO class which can create an FBO of a certain size with a certain type of depth buffer, and the options for the depth buffer attachment are none, a render buffer, or a texture, all of which I've talked about in previous tutorials. The rest of the class is pretty much as you would expect, and it's all stuff that I talked about in the water tutorial. The only thing is that we do now have three different FBO classes in our project, one for the water, one for shadows, and now one for post-processing, so you might want to consider merging them into a single class that can be used for all FBO-related activities. In the post-processing class, I've simply created a 2D quad which will fill up the whole display, and before any post-processing takes place, the quad's VAO is bound so that the quad can be rendered, and when the post-processing pipeline is finished, the quad is unbound. Depth testing is also disabled during post-processing, because there's simply no need for it, we're only rendering a single quad each time. So any post-processing that we want to occur will have to take place here, between the start and end method calls in the do post-processing method. Finally, the image renderer class has a method for rendering the quad to either the screen or to another FBO if this constructor here is used. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating a simple post-processing effect which will alter the contrast of the image. So to do this, we're going to render the 3D scene to an FBO, and then we'll need to render that image onto a textured quad on the screen, using a shader program that changes the contrast of the image. 
So the first thing that we're going to do in the code today is to create this step here, which renders a textured quad onto the screen using a shader program that alters the contrast. So let's get into the code and we're going to create a new class which is going to render that textured quad and use the shader program to change the contrast of the colors in that quad. So we're going to need an image renderer to render the quad and we're also going to need a shader program and you can see that I've set up a very simple shader program for you here, the contrast shader, and this is basically exactly the same as the shader program that we use to render the GUIs. So it basically just renders a textured quad so we're going to need one of them as well. Then in the contrast changer constructor, we're just going to initialize the renderer and the shader. So for the shader, we just need a new contrast shader. And for the image renderer, we're going to initialize this with the uh, no argument constructor, because that means that the quad will be rendered to the screen instead of to a new FBO, because we've only got one stage in this post processing pipeline. So next up, we're going to add a cleanup method just to clean up the renderer and the shader. So this just has to do renderer.cleanup and shader.cleanup. And now we need the method that's going to do most of the work, which is the render method. And this is going to render the textured quad. So this is going to take in the texture, which will just be an image of the scene. It's going to start the shader program, the shader program that we're going to make change the contrast. We then need to bind the texture and we're going to bind it to texture unit zero. So we need to set the active texture unit to texture unit zero. We bind the texture to that unit uh, so that it can be sampled in the fragment shader. And we're now going to use the renderer, the image renderer to render that quad with that texture. And then we can stop the shader program once that's happened. Next up, we need to go into the post processing class and actually add this contrast changer effect to our post processing pipeline so that the contrast actually gets changed when we do the post processing. So in the init method, we're going to create a new contrast changer. And of course we need to remember to clean this up in the cleanup method. And then in the do post processing method, when the post processing is carried out, we're going to carry out the contrast changer effect and we're going to give it the color texture, which will be an image of the scene. And of course, to get that image of the scene, we need to have rendered all of our scene to an FBO. So in the main game loop class, we need to create an FBO and make sure that everything that we're rendering to the scene at the moment actually gets rendered to the FBO instead. So this FBO is going to be the same size as the screen. We want it, of course, to be the same resolution and it is going to need a depth buffer. And uh, we're just going to use a render buffer for now because we don't actually need to sample it in the shaders yet. So we now need to make sure that everything that we want to get post-processed gets rendered to this FBO. So we're going to bind the FBO before we render the scene to the screen. We also want the water to get rendered to this and the particles, uh, but we don't really want the GYs to get rendered to this. We don't need them to be part of the post-processing. So we're going to unbind the FBO before the GYs and the text is rendered. Then we need to remember to clean up the FBO after the game has closed. And now we can start using post-processing. So before the while loop, we need to set up post-processing by calling post-processing.init, and that takes in the loader. And then after the while loop, after the game has closed, we need to clean up post-processing. And then each frame after we've rendered the scene to the FBO, we can carry out some post-processing on that texture, that image of the scene by calling postprocessing.do postprocessing and that takes in the color texture which will be an image of the scene which has been rendered to the FBO. So if we go ahead and run this, everything should look like it usually does because at the moment the shader program that we're using to render this textured quad to the screen is simply rendering the quad in the color of the texture and it's not changing anything. But if we go into that shader program, so into the contrast fragment shader, we can switch around the colors of the texture to get a different effect. So here I'm going to switch around the blue and green components of the image of the scene. And you can see that that has now changed the colors in the image that we see on the screen. So now that we've done that, we can pretty much change the color in whatever way we want. Uh, but I'm going to do what I set out to do this week, which was to change the contrast of the image of the scene. So for this, we're going to need a contrast value and I'm going to set that to 0.3 for now, but of course you can set that to whatever you want. And then the contrast formula 
is this here. So basically this shifts the color values so that they go between minus 0.5 and 0.5. It then scales them up using the contrast value so that the darker colors become even darker and the brighter colors become even brighter. And then it removes that offset by adding 0.5 so that the colors are once again between zero and one. So if I go ahead and run that, you can see now that the contrast of the image that we see on the screen has been increased. So that is going to be it for this week. Next time we're going to be having a look at some other post-processing effects such as Gaussian blurs. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week and I will see you all next time.